Hi, I'm John Lear, President and CEO of the Parkinson's Foundation. Thank you for joining us for a day to reach further. Parkinson's disease is now the fastest growing neurological condition in the world. Every six minutes, someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's. The need for improved treatments, increased access to quality care, and heightened awareness is more important now than ever. The Parkinson's Foundation's Reach Further campaign is investing an additional $30 million to accelerate Parkinson's research improve care and increase access to quality of life programs. Your incredible support has already brought us halfway to this goal. The only way we can find a cure for Parkinson's disease is through research. Today, we want to show you how the Reach Further campaign is accelerating research findings and driving the path to a cure today. Learn more about the Reach Further campaign and donate today at parkinson.org slash reach further day. Hi, my name is Brian Pepin. I'm the CEO and founder of Rune Labs, the software and data company behind Strive PD, uh, which is a software and data platform for precision medicine and Parkinson's. Uh, Strive PD includes a free-to-use patient app to passively monitor Parkinson's symptoms. I'm here today with uh, Ara, who is the original designer of the Strive PD app and uh, a member of our patient advisory board. Hi, I'm Aura Oslop. So not only am I the original creator of the Strive PD app, I'm a daily user and have been for a long time. With Strive PD, users can understand what makes them feel better or worse to take control of their care journey. Today, um, we're coming to you with big news. We've partnered with the Parkinson's Foundation uh, to match every donation received for the A Day to Reach Further campaign up to $10,000. Our mission at Rune Labs uh, with Strive PD is to help speed up the development and delivery of precision medicine uh, in Parkinson's and just, we're, we're really happy to be able to partner with a program like A Day to Reach Further that's so closely aligned with that goal. Uh, we know that together we can make a difference for people with Parkinson's and their loved ones and hope that you join us. Hi, I'm Dr. James Beck, Chief Scientific Officer of the Parkinson's Foundation. Although 10 million people live with Parkinson's disease globally, research is severely underfunded. At the Parkinson's Foundation, we are committed to closing the funding gaps in research that will lead us to a cure. While Parkinson's is complex, our research strategy is simple. Attack this disease from every angle. Today, I'm going to talk to you about three initiatives we are currently funding as we work toward ending Parkinson's disease. Every year, the Parkinson's Foundation funds cutting-edge research in the Parkinson's disease field. To cure Parkinson's, we need to know exactly what causes it, because you can't fix a problem if you don't know how it's broken. Our research team finds and funds innovative scientists that focus on unraveling the basic biology of Parkinson's. These scientists work to understand the how and the why behind Parkinson's disease. In the past, research the Foundation has funded has led to groundbreaking advances in Parkinson's research. Taking on a disease as complex as Parkinson's requires the best scientific minds in the world. That's why our grants fund researchers who are devoted to deciphering this disease, researchers who are finding new ways to attack it and stop it from progressing. We believe the next breakthrough can occur in any lab, from any researcher, at any time. When we fund high-risk research that typically does not receive federal funding, we are advancing ideas that can lead to high rewards. Since federal funding for Parkinson's research is diminishing compared to other diseases, your support is vital to keep researchers in the Parkinson's disease field. Now, let's hear from some of these researchers so you can see how their research is helping us better understand Parkinson's disease. So my research is trying to identify why it is that some individuals progress really rapidly towards lots of cognitive impairment, and other individuals do great for 15 or 20 years. The goal of identifying this is if we can figure out who those folks are and what makes them different, the folks who do better, maybe we can try to apply that for the folks who aren't doing quite as well. Really what we're hoping to do is find commonality between all of the many environmental contaminants out there that are at least somewhat linked to Parkinson's. And by doing that, we can come up with an idea of how these, these many different things that we're exposed to might elevate Parkinson's disease risk. And one way that we could affect the Parkinson's community is to actually limit exposures. Number one goal of this is 
come up with new therapeutic targets for Parkinson's disease. So as you know, uh, for Parkinson's disease, we really only have uh, treatments that fix symptoms of disease. You can't slow the course of disease. So we build on information that we have from the clinic, from genetics and things like that, to try to create uh, better treatments using the systems-based approaches. So what it means for uh, the field would be you know, a halt of the disease and an ultimate cure for the disease. My interest is in freezing of gait in Parkinson's disease and I'm trying to develop ways for uh, predicting why some people develop freezing of gait and why others don't so that we can develop therapies to try and treat patients before they even hopefully develop. The problem. My research focuses on understanding the uh, whys and the hows of the cognitive symptoms that occur in Parkinson's patients. So people often think of the dementia that occurs later in the disease, um, but we're uh, really interested in all of the things that emerge earlier on. So what I am doing with my uh, fellowship award is looking at individuals' brain activity while they walk with and without these interventions um, to see what brain areas are active and not, not active and what changes about that when you give them interventions, uh, such as these cueing interventions. Uh, the hope is that if we can understand more about why these interventions work or what brain areas particularly are active when individuals respond well to these interventions, we can potentially develop even better interventions using more modern technology. We study genes that cause Parkinson's disease and although we know that these genes are important for many functions throughout the body, we don't know how all of these genes contribute to health and we don't know what happens when these genes are mutated and things go wrong and that cascade of events eventually leads to Parkinson's disease. So our lab is using those genes and honing in on those genes to get clues as to what causes Parkinson's disease in the greater general population. So our brain is a very expansive organ. It needs a lot of energy to function properly. And the biological form of that energy is called ATP. is produced by these tiny, tiny batteries called mitochondria. And as we get older, these batteries, they start to malfunction, and that's one of the underlying causes of neurodegenerative diseases, including Parkinson's disease. So my research focus is to understand how do batteries can function properly, and what is leading to their improper function, because if we can understand that, maybe we can create um, therapies to enhance their function. I am very, very lucky in that I work with a movement disorders neurologist and I have a basic science background here so I get to both approach Parkinson's disease from a bench to a, a translational research to a bedside approach where the patients I'm working with are the people who I want to help in the long run and they are my motivation here for doing a lot of this work. Extensive funding and support are required for a new Parkinson's drug to go from an idea to an available medication. Launching a new drug can take years and cost upwards of $1 billion or more. Alongside Parkinson's UK, our partners in tackling Parkinson's disease, we're accelerating this timeline through the Parkinson's Virtual Biotech. The Virtual Biotech is focused on building a pipeline of new drugs exclusively for Parkinson's disease. With fewer pharmaceutical companies investing in Parkinson's drug research, the Parkinson's Virtual Biotech is our best chance to find the next life-changing drug. The initiative has already evaluated dozens of new drugs and is now investing in 13 medications that hope to either address Parkinson's symptoms or aim to slow, stop, or even prevent Parkinson's disease altogether. The Parkinson's Virtual Biotech is the fastest way to propel new medications from the lab to clinical trials and into pharmacies. We are speeding up the process to jumpstart new and promising therapies within years instead of decades. With your support, we can find the next life-changing Parkinson's disease treatment. Genetics research can fast-track the discovery of new and better Parkinson's disease treatments. Right now, pharmaceutical companies are developing early-stage therapies or drugs that target specific genetic mutations of Parkinson's. Some studies are already enrolling people in clinical trials to test these new treatments. However, it can take years to fill these clinical trials. For one clinical trial that needs 300 participants with a genetic form of Parkinson's, researchers may have to screen up to 15,000 people in order to find those who will qualify to enroll. PD Generation, 
Mapping the Future of Parkinson's Disease is our groundbreaking study that offers genetic testing and counseling to people at no cost. Because of the study, more than 10,000 people with Parkinson's now know their genetic tie to this disease. For nearly 75% of our participants, PD Generation is the first Parkinson's research study that they have been part of. These people now have vital information about their genetic link to Parkinson's disease, allowing them to take the next step and enroll in a clinical study. By connecting our participants to relevant trials, we're even closer to a breakthrough in Parkinson's disease treatment. Next, you'll hear from Dr. Anna Nido, our Associate Vice President of Research Programs, about the importance of diversifying genetic data and how the Parkinson's Foundation has expanded PD generation to serve a broader community of people living with Parkinson's. I'm Dr. Anna Naito, Associate Vice President of Research Programs here at the Parkinson's Foundation. Today, I'm gonna to share some early results from our genetic testing initiative, PD Generation, Mapping the Future of Parkinson's Disease. PD Generation is a national study that offers genetic testing for Parkinson's related genes and genetic counseling at no cost for participants with a confirmed Parkinson's diagnosis. The goal of PD Generation is to improve Parkinson's care by accelerating research to advance treatment. And the study also helps people with Parkinson's and their clinicians identify whether they may qualify for enrollment into certain clinical trials based on their results. So this study uniquely addresses the three mission pillars of the foundation, including care, education, and research. So far, we have enrolled more than 11,000 people with Parkinson's into PD Generation, reaching 73% of our initial goal to recruit 15,000 participants. PD Generation screens for mutations across seven genes that are linked to Parkinson's. From our current data, we found that about 12% of our participants have a genetic link to Parkinson's disease. The GBA gene is the most common genetic mutation found among our participants. Carriers of this gene may experience PD symptoms at an earlier age compared to those without a genetic form of Parkinson's. Another key PD generation finding is that 30% of participants reported a first degree relative living with Parkinson's. This means that they have a parent, sibling, or child who has also been diagnosed with the disease. Parkinson's research has long been static, and this is because data have largely been based off of European ancestry populations. No two people with Parkinson's are identical. And that's why diversifying the data is so critical because it's gonna help us accelerate our pace of research, but really understand the underlying causes of the disease, which might not just be one pathway or one cause. Through PD Generation, we aim to make genetic testing accessible to every person living with Parkinson's. We currently have participants enrolled from all 50 states, Canada, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic. The study offers genetic testing and counseling in both English and Spanish, which is a first of its kind for a research study of this scale. We also have collaborated with our PD Gene Latino Advisory Committee, who is helping us increase clinical research education and participation among the Hispanic and Latinx people living with Parkinson's. The goal of this advisory committee is to really learn about the needs of the community and then also learn about their experiences with Parkinson's so that we can come to them and address their needs. And over the past year, we're proud to say that we doubled the number of Spanish-speaking participants and we now have over a thousand Hispanics represented into PD Gene. And we recently formed a partnership with Morehouse School of Medicine that aims to make PD Generation more accessible to Black and African American communities. The next phase of our genetic study is to focus on expanding to new areas and as part of our commitment to reach new populations, we are enrolling people across 23 testing centers and we're also continuing to offer at-home testing through telemedicine. One of our future goals is to expand the PD Generation study to South America so that we can further diversify our data and to connect more people to clinical trials. So we're excited about the potential of PD Generation and helping research Researchers better understand the role of genetics in Parkinson's disease. 
To learn more about PDG Generation or to enroll in the study, visit parkinson.org slash PDG Generation or call our helpline at 1-800-4PD-INFO. I now introduce you to movement disorders neurologist, Dr. Chantel Branson, who's not only an expert in Parkinson's, but is also working to remove the barriers to care that exist for the Black and African American community. History of the clinical research within the Black community has been a bit of a challenge given our historical societal history within the United States. Previous studies have shown racial disparities in the diagnoses and treatment of Parkinson's, with Black people with PD receiving delayed diagnoses and being less likely to be diagnosed compared to other racial groups. Morehouse School of Medicine is the first historically Black institution of medicine to become a research site for PD generation. The partnership aims to make PD genetic testing and counseling more accessible for Black and African American people with Parkinson's disease. Looking to the future, the one takeaway that I want to share with the Parkinson's community is inclusion. Parkinson's Foundation has done a lot with allowing participants to receive the results of their genetic testing and to provide genetic counseling. I want to encourage community members to take part in PD generation so they can improve their disease management, learn more about their family's risk for Parkinson's disease, potentially be connected to clinical trials and impact the future development of improved treatments and medications for themselves and future generations. It is only with your support that we are able to do the research that we can do. And that collaboration and working together toward our common goals is really critical. Without these kinds of, of funded projects, we would not be anywhere near that. And so, you know, I think it's just a critical example of how people, even with you know, small or incremental changes can make a huge impact on how we build upon our research in order to better understand and hopefully treat the disease. With this grant, uh, I will be able to build pilot data that will then allow me to apply for uh, federal funding and for a kind of longer duration grant. Without the help of, you know, donors and patients and advocates and really the structure of Parkinson's Foundation, all this research wouldn't be pos uh, possible. I don't even know what I'd be working on right now, to be honest. I really used this award to get the cell culture model going and it's extremely expensive and labor intensive and I, I could not have done this without without this help. Without any financial support, these kind of projects wouldn't be possible. We're really at a point where we need more people thinking about uh, how to better treat the symptoms of the disease. With help from donors such as yourselves that um, we can move this forward and donating maybe money, maybe donating time to participate in research. It's very difficult sometimes to get people to participate and that's the only way we can move um, this field forward. I have this deep belief to receive funding to promote this investigator initiated trial is crucial for the development of future, uh, future treatment strategies and therefore I just wanted to say thank you. On my behalf as well as the families who suffer from Parkinson's I wish to thank you now and also on the day that you do donate. Thank you very much. Thank you for helping us to reach further. On behalf of everyone at the Parkinson's Foundation, thank you for supporting the Reach Further campaign. 90,000 Americans are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease each year. Focusing on the most promising pathways forward is how we can change the course of this disease in years, not decades. Your donation to the Reach Further campaign accelerates research that will lead us to new treatments. Consider giving today at parkinson.org slash reachfurtherday. Thank you very much.